time uh, Mrs. May I know by the time Mrs. Uh, Mabokwe is done with our, our teaching and our presentation to us today, I know that we are all going to catapult our businesses this week. <laughs> After this week, yeah. actually, because this week is a week for us to um, gather um, intelligence now. So, just like they say in the CIA, this this week is for intelligence gathering. Now we are gathering <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we are gathering intelligence from those who have gone ahead, who have done it, and have done it in in in, in big strides. And uh, we a big um, so just to also touch on um, on um, this is, uh, um, sorry, please. Um, if you are not speaking, please can you mute, please? I think um. Mr. Legally. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Yes, thank you. All right. So um just to touch on um Mrs. Uh, Meg Bokpe's um profile. Uh, when I when I and uh, Mr. Peter spoke about her being on the panel, I was like, ah, he the only person that served Momo in the White House. <laughs> so she she actually put Nigeria on, she put Africa on the map globally for us because Michelle Obama has tested Niger Nigeria more and more, <laughs> finally. So um, Mrs. Um, Ayode Jimekbokwe is the founder of No, no Leftovers, Nigeria Limited. They are catering outfits that have started since 2007. And one of the most interesting things that uh, I would I would quickly throw to Mrs. Megbokwe before she does any presentation is she started this business with a thousand naira. So this business today is a multi is a multi million going to a multi billion dollar business so, as, as as we speak today. So now this is these are the kind of people that we want to connect with. These are the kind of people that we need to speak to to hear from. That way we can properly we can go back to our drawing board and put our businesses in proper alignment with the times. So she was also one of the first um, women worldwide to benefit from the ten thousand. Women Initiative sponsored by Goldman Sachs of the United States. And um, she's an ambassador of the 10,000 Women Initiative. She was she's also she has also been a speaker at the Clinton Global Initiative in New York with world leaders in attendance. So it is a it is an honor to have you here, Mrs. Megbokwe. Thank you so much for indulging us and thank you so much for coming to teach and exchange value with us. Thank you so much, my you're welcome. Thank you very, very, very much. Welcome, man. Welcome, man. Yes, a round of applause, everybody. A round of applause. Yes, I want to hear your. I want to hear your applause. I want to hear your applause, everybody. I want to hear your applause. <laughs> now, okay. now, to add to add to that, Mrs. Mabel yeah. is my mother. All right, she was my mother when I was a very, very stubborn boy. I mean, there's still a part of me that is stubborn to today. But just yes, that, yes, I can attest to that. Channeled, you know, <laughs> and, I mean, you are stubborn. You are stubborn. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation, man. And it's, right. it's instructive, actually, that because a lot is going to be shared over the next couple of you know days, over the next one week, a lot is going to be shared from different voices and all that. So it's instructive that we have Mrs. Megbokwe open this conference. And she's going to be speaking on a very interesting topic. It's called starting from zero. And it's key that we have this as the base to know that whatever anybody is coming to say, you can start from zero. You can start from where you are. So that, you know, by the multitude of information, we also don't get carried away to say, oh, when will I get the resources? When will I do this? When will I do that? All right. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. I really can't say that enough. And by the way, she's not even in Nigeria. Just so you know, she's somewhere way, way, way outside Africa. But you know, she's made this sacrifice to be with us today. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you very, very much for having me. I, I feel very honored to be here. I do not take any platform for granted. I am very excited to be here amongst young people, youth and business forum. Thank you for having me and um, for um, the moderator, thank you. You did justice to my name. You tried. You tried. You tried. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you so much, Peter. Truly, I can say, I'm proud to say that Peter is a son. In fact, I had a 5 a.m. meeting this morning and I brought up Peter's name. Peter, I'm very proud of oh, you. Wow. Oh, Peter, my life. Oh, my goodness. I <laughs> gave my husband a nice sleepless night, but he has always been a promising young man. And I, we are so delighted to see what you are evolved into and what you're yet evolving into because we know there's greatness in you. All right. So, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've been introduced and um, I'm going to dive right in. I have 45 minutes. Like Peter said, I'm not in Nigeria, I'm in the UK. And I have meetings slated for today. I'm also going to be transmitting to the US for another conference. I came into the UK to host a conference. And it's going to be part of my delivery. I like to keep it real. I like to keep it simple. Because I, find out, I found out that in a lot of complexities, people get lost. And um, I thank God for the way he has wired me. He has wired my life to be very simple. And so I'm committed to giving it the way it is. I'm not going to add anything that has never been there. I learn from people. And um, I'm grateful for the different people that have featured in my life and are still featuring. And so I'm going to start from the point of people. We're talking about starting from zero. And I'm not even limiting it to business alone. So I'm not just talking about business alone. It could be anything. It could be a ministry. It could be um, a relationship. It could be anything that you want to start. Or you're just like, we are, you, you might just be here and you're saying, I'm not even talking about business. I just want to start life afresh. I want to tell you, welcome. Welcome to this platform. Um, so starting life afresh to start with, starting life afresh is not a one-off thing. It's a bus stop that you will get to at different seasons in your life. So seasons, we, we, we should live our lives ideally in seasons. Yes, thank God for years, but truly life is lived in seasons. And when you understand that life is lived in seasons, it will ease the pressure that you put on yourself. Seasons are not the function of any human being. Seasons are fun a function of a creator, the one who created seasons. I'm not here to preach, but I'm just here to tell you the simple truth. Life is lived in seasons, and it is important to commit your life into the hands of the master of seasons. Well, you are, you are at liberty to worship and pay obeisance to whoever you want to. But there is a hand that holds everything together. And that hand is God Almighty. So it's important that you commit your life to the one that holds the seasons together. When you commit your hand to the your life to the one that holds the seasons together, then you begin to have an understanding of where you are. Because first and foremost, as I talk, start with people. That the people, as I talk about people, you are one of the people. And so I'm focusing on you first amongst the different people that will come into your life. I'm going to refer to Peter because, I mean, it's, it's, it will make my delivery very relatable because it's one, someone that all of you know. When I met Peter, I met Peter um, about, I'm not sure if it's up to 20 years now. I'm not sure if it's up to 20 years. If it's not up to 20 years, it should be almost 20 years because it is my track. Did you say something? Yeah, it is my actually. Absolutely. Yeah. It's easy for me to track because I started No Leftovers 15 years ago. And I remember that pastoring Peter was about five years before then. So I'm, I was, of course, much younger. I'm 55 now. I started my business at 40. So I was in my mid-30s. And I myself was struggling with identity. I wasn't idle. I had a job. But in that job, I found at some point a sense of fulfillment. But as the years went by, my sense of fulfillment began to wane. But while I was on that job and pastoring with my husband, there were yearnings in my heart that I could not adequately interpret. And because, because I couldn't interpret those yearnings to be able to fit into my life, 
I began to see people I could, you know, express the yearnings through. Peter being one of them. I did a lot of things when we were pastoring that church. Came up with a lot of ideas. Because one of the first things I realized was that I struggled to have a sense of identity because I did not have a background that tutored me on what having a sense of identity was all about. That does not mean to say that my parents were not amazing. My parents were very amazing, but they did not, they were not able to adequately talk to me about who I was. Number one, I was a problem, in quotes, problem child to them. My siblings were all doing very well. And but but I was constantly compared. And that always stirred up some form of rebellion in me. So that so much that I grew up and settled down in life, became married, began to have my children without really knowing who I was. I went to church, but and church helped me to some extent. But you see, there is an extent to which people can help you to. They will help you to some extent, but you see, if you're not properly connected to who you are and who ha has your seasons in his hands, you will completely you'll continue to go through different motions and at the end of the day you will feel inadequate. So it is important as a human being for you to understand who you are. You will not fully understand it. So don't think I'm saying you should fully understand it because even at age 55, a lot of things are still you know, new to me. I'm I'm still in a I'm still in a process of self-discovery. But it is important for you to pause, for you to take a break and understand who you are now. Seasons have passed. I mean, you're here now. You're not two. Even if you're a two-year-old, you were born two years ago. So some seasons have passed. So seasons have passed for you. You cannot go back to those seasons to begin to dig into them and to begin to want to be what you should have been in those seasons. But here you are in this season. So the first thing you have to do, we are talking about starting. What does it mean to start? Start. What, what it means to start is to even begin, okay? So we can't go back to the very beginning. I like that song. Let's start from the very beginning, a very good place to start. That song of music, sound of music song, it tells you A, B, C, D. So I don't know where you are. You might be D now or G. You can definitely not go to A. It's impossible. So the very good place to start is where you are. And so you have to have a me time with yourself. Look at yourself and really be brutally true with yourself. Who am I? I got to that point of having this engagement with myself at age 40. So it's not a safe, so I mean, a lot of things had happened. I was going through different motions, just doing a lot of things, but I hadn't really connected all the things I was doing with who Ayo is. Who am I? Who is Ayo? What's Ayo meant to be doing? So it wasn't until age 40 that this, not age 40, the 38, 39, I began to have these conversations with myself. Who are you, Ayo? Now you're 40, you're entering the evening, you're going to be 40, you're entering the evening period of your life. Is this all that your life is all about? And I was, I began to understand who I was. I began to take ownership of my life. And there's no way you will be able to successfully take ownership of your life and have an understanding of who you are without actually thinking of your journey. You see, even though you didn't quite understand the process, everything you had been through, you didn't understand seasons and you didn't understand what those seasons were, you will have to, at the point of you saying, and I want to know who I am, you will have to go into the archives of the things you've been through, the experiences you've had. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should go and try to alter anything. Don't alter anything. All you have to do is just reminisce. Just think of all the things you've been through. And these were my thoughts. To so make it easy, like I said, I like to keep it simple. These were my thoughts. Okay, Ayo, now you're here. At that time, I was working as a secretary in Corona School in Queen. Ayo, now you're here. Where have you been? Okay, so I have worked as a, I have worked, I went to school as a secretary. When I was growing up, yes, I had issues growing up. What were the things that excited me growing up? Ah, I will remember that my me time excited me. I got into trouble a lot. 
and anytime I got into trouble, I would be told to, I would be left alone. Sometimes I'm told to kneel down. Sometimes I'm told to raise my hand. But I will be left alone and there will be deafening silence. And But those times were interesting to me because they helped me to daydream. And so I, I, at that time, when I was 38, 39, I began to remember that my fondest times were when, when I was left alone to daydream. And there were times when I would be in my room, I would stand in the front of the mirror and I would daydream. I would imagine that I was standing before a crowd of people. I was a leader talking about politics, talking about empowerment, talking, you know, just gesticulating and doing all sorts of crazy things. And there moment, were moments my mother would come into the room and I wouldn't know. And she would just see me standing in front of the mirror and she would give me a strong heat on my back and she will say Moti. I'll let me say it in your mind I want to interpret it Motiso. Motiso. that means I have said it that there's something wrong with this child how on earth can a child be talking to herself in the mirror if it's not that she has some spirits torturing her that was the understanding my parents had but I was acting my future without even understanding and so all of this accumulated into me saying, okay, now those were the things I enjoyed doing. So also I went through school, I learned um, sectorial, I, I went through a sectorial administration course, I learned typing, I learned shorthand. I remembered all my experiences in school, how I was bullied. I remembered even the bad ones. What, and I began to think, what were the things that got me into trouble a lot of times? Do you know what got me into trouble? what got me into trouble was the desire to be liked i just wanted everybody to like me and i would do things that i wasn't wired for i would do things that i didn't even understand i would go with company that i wasn't supposed to go with and that ended up me up in a lot of trouble so those were the express experiences that i began to receive and you know and began to make me understand so this is who io is so i got to the point where i said to myself i is actually a star Ayo is a creative. Ayo is drama. Ayo is also simple because when the drama is too much, I get overwhelmed. Ayo is actually simple. At that point, I had gotten married, gotten married to the best man in the world. I had my children. And so when I relieved all of that, and I said to myself, so Ayo, this is where you are now. What do you have? Because when we talk about starting from zero, there's actually nothing like zero. The owner of the season created you. The owner of the seasons created you. And he didn't create anybody with zero. So I defer slightly, even though I understand what this topic means. But there's no zero. Nobody. There's no zero. Nobody landed with a zero account. But it's not wicked to have sent anyone into this earth with zero. You didn't land with a zero account. There was something in your account. How be it small? but there was something and it requires you to discover it yourself. So with that, that is in your account, you now begin to engage with people and it gives you an understanding of who you are. So when I really began to relieve my past, all the things I had gone through and all the people I had met, I now said to myself, what do I have? It felt as if I didn't have anything and it will feel like that to you if you haven't ever succeeded in anything. I mean, look at Peter. I remember Peter. Peter, I used to look at him then. He said, this boy, he said he's big. You know, his body was small like this. I, I, I haven't seen Peter. I don't know if, well, I've seen some of his pictures. So to really chop up, what that means is that he has really chopped up. But then I look at him. Ah, this boy, he's big head. And then he's always wearing Dunlop slippers. Ah, and most times, the Dunlop slippers, the back of the Dunlop, Dunlop slippers will have eaten up. And I'm like, ah, can't, he, can't he just even afford to buy something? But guess what? Peter almost always had a book. <laughs> you want that? He always almost, if it wasn't a main book, it would be an exercise book. And he would put it under his armpit and he'll be strolling to church and he'll just be looking around like, and he always had a smile. His hair was afro. And he was always engaging my husband. 
myself and Peter really not we didn't as much as I and mean, we didn't have the type of time he had with my husband. I didn't have the type of time Peter had with my husband. They were always, you know, in one conversation or the other. And I would look at this guy, right? Does he even know where he's going? Anyway, and I'll sit there, even say, I don't even know where I'm going. So let's just be looking at ourselves. But I did all I knew I could do to invest in this young one. So I brought that up when I spoke about people. You know, the people God brings your way, because I don't want it to sound like it's a church. I, But that's just who I am. I mean, you talk about what you have experienced. That's why you have invited me. So the people God brings your way at the end of the day will begin to form you. I know also that at some point, Peter was doing, taking lessons. He would go to children's houses, be taking them lessons, helping them with the exams. So I said that to say to you that you need to examine and appraise and assess what you have. You may not have what everybody has. But what do you have? There's nobody with a zero tank. There's something in your tank. For so many times we think about money. And of course, if we talk about business, we're thinking about capital. Let's leave that. If that, that's one thing that hinders people from growing and hinders people from being who they should be. So let's leave all of that. Let's focus on what you have in terms of people, what you have in terms of skills, what you have in terms of talent, what you have in terms of experience, what you have in terms of abilities, what you have in terms of even spiritual gifts, all that you have, all of this are ingredients to help you to become who you should be. I want to remind you, I'm looking at the time. I want to remind you that when I started, I said that starting when I began this presentation, I said that starting is not a one-off thing. Starting is a continuous thing because you will get to a point, no matter how successful you are, and thank God, thank God for the profile, but I'm yearning for more. So no matter how successful you are, you will get to a point at the end of a season because every success has a season. Whatever you're successful at, it's a season. I'm speaking about Peter being a teacher at some point. It was a season. I'm talking about Peter being... This boy that comes to church with his big head. Peter, I'm your mother, so it's fine. Big head. It was a season. Any season you go through will end. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful. But it's what you do with the season that determines whether or not you actually have a leg up in life. And so for me too, the season of being a pastor's wife in the church where I met Peter ended. And so many seasons have ended. And even in this course of 15 years of starting my business, I've had a lot of seasons. So what I'm saying to you is not a one-off thing. It's not just for people who are starting from what they think is zero. It's for everybody here. When you get to a point where you feel that where I am is too small, because we need, if you continue to go on in life and you never get to a point where you say where I am is too small, then something is wrong. No matter how successful you are, for as long as there's life in you, there will be a there should be a point where you say, Well, I am too small. Listen, my father turned to eight six yesterday. And I call he calls my, my siblings and I every now and then and says to us, I want something different. My father traveled to the US for the first time uh, at 80. And that was because he began to yearn, said, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to go to this place. I want to go to that place. He was yearning for more. So we're not talking about just because you don't have anything you're doing now. We're talking about, I'm, I'm just also serving a notice to some people so that that emptiness that will come at some point in your life when you thought you had been having a good does not become a root shock to you. When it comes, embrace it, knowing that God is about to take you to the next level. So in the, running this business, I've had seasons that I'm like, what next? What next? So what next? Where do I go from here? So now let me begin to break it down to business because I can see that my time is running fast. 
So when you have that first appraisal of yourself, what do you have? Where am I? And the people that God so has surrounded you with, then you need to make informed decisions. You have to think by yourself. You have to be very, very strategic. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. Do not compare yourself with anybody, no matter how successful that person is, no matter how close that person is to you. It might even be your husband or your wife. Mm -mm. You are he, he's him, and you are you, or she's she, <laughs> and you are you. So as much as God brings different people into our lives, you need to find your, have a sense of identity. So these are the things that I have at my disposal. With what I have, what ideas can I generate? The person I am today, I never saw it 15 years ago. I never thought the way I'm thinking now. When I started my business, it was all about eating. Let's just eat. Let's just be having 10. At least let me have 10,000 in my account. Let me have 20,000 in my account. So... It's good to have those big dreams. Have those big dreams, but please, if you have those big dreams alone and you can't break it down, it's going to choke you. Oh, my choke. It's going to choke you. So as lofty as your ideas are, because I'm talking about idea generation, ideas generation, as lofty as your dreams are, or if those dreams are not big, they are simply basic. Don't be worried. Number one, break the lofty dreams down. Number two, the dreams are small compared to the huge dreams that people like are sharing. Don't worry. Be intentional about focusing on your small dreams and building. So with the small, I mean, so what happened to me was, what do I have? I thought I didn't have anything. But guess what? I realized that I have a fantastic husband. Will I sell him? No. I realized that I have amazing children who God helped us to raise. I've been married for 30 years and not one day have we had a house sale. And so I looked at myself and I'm like, wow, that's a gift. At that point, I'd been married for 15 years. And I looked at my 15 year journey. How did my husband and, and my husband and I have an amazing marriage? We agree on things, even when we disagree, we disagree in love and we come back, that's an asset. So I began to think of what can I do with these assets? So when I started this business, actually, it wasn't to start a business, it was just to meet an immediate need. So look at how you can meet the immediate needs around you, not just your need, because me, I can fast for Africa. So it wasn't just meeting my need, it was meeting the needs of others. However, they were the needs of my family. Meeting, so look at what needs can you meet? Please, may I announce to you? Hmm. It might be the need of meeting, it might, be, meet the, it might be meeting the need of your neighbor. Let me bring another person into this picture. I'm not going to mention her name. When I began to have my children, when our son was one, and I found out I was pregnant, I almost died. If I hadn't been a Christian, I would have aborted that pregnancy. I was miserable. Then I would go, like I said, I was all by myself. My husband and I, my husband would have gone to work. And then I would have to cook. So I would, with my tummy and baby on my back, I will go grind pepper. And there was this young girl, there was the pepper woman, the woman selling pepper, who said to me, oh, Madam, eh, tell me, let, don't be coming the sun. My daughter, who has just finished school starts that is waiting for her result can be helping you. This girl, this woman would settle her daughter to keep to come to my house intermittently during the day to find out if I had anything I wanted to do. This woman, what she didn't know was that she was creating a space for her daughter. Her daughter would come and tell me, um, how can I help you? And that was how we began to nurture her daughter as we were nurturing her, our own children. To the extent that we began to pay her fees, take her to church, we invested in her. Long and short, guess what? Let me just keep tell you where this girl is now. Now this girl is very different from her siblings, totally different, it's like cheese and chalk. 
because we brought her in and gave her the, we didn't give her money. We gave her access and she was ready to take it. So before I forget, you need to consider the relationships that you have around you. When you have access to the relationships that are formidable, don't mess those relationships up. Don't treat them like trash. Don't treat ex access with levity. This girl we gave access to and she took in everything. After a while, we moved away from that environment. She went to school and we lost touch. Years down the line, last year, my daughter got married. Our daughter got married. And this young girl heard somewhere that our daughter was getting married. Reached out to me on Instagram. We exchanged numbers. I was excited to have her. And then she sent me a message, Mom, I hear your daughter is getting married. I want to be of help. I said, um, I'll let you know where you can come in. And then she goes, okay, mom, while you're waiting to let me know where I can come in, can I send something to you? I was wondering, what does Omo Yalata, her mother was selling pepe, what does Omo Yalata want to send to me? I said, okay. She noticed my hesitation. I said, mom, please, can I just send a million to you? I said, I, I, what did you say? When she was having this conversation with me, I was in America. I sat on the floor. I said, what did you say? She said, I want to send a million. Of course, immediately I sent her my account number. It wasn't up to two minutes. She sent me a million naira. What am I telling you? By the time I called this girl to say, what did you just do? She said, mom, can't you see the way you changed my life? All I needed was the access you gave me. And it helped me to begin to dream. And here I am. I work in an oil service company. I'm making millions more. After that, she sent, still kept sending money. She still sent another million a few days ago. Can you see? Who told you you have? Look at her today. Who told you your tank is empty? Who told you you have zero? So break down your dreams, come down. Some of us are on two high horses, especially today because we have a lot of motivational speakers. We have a, that's why I want to keep it real so that nobody, I don't, I am not the cause of anybody running, running at a speed that that person shouldn't be running. I keep it real. I, 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 be, I am as vulnerable as I possibly can so that I can be relatable. Break it down, come down your high horse. I can see that one of the speakers is PK Kai. This man's life is an inspiration. I knew him. I knew I've known him for years. And I'm I'm amazed at what God is doing in his life. And I know he's also one that will tell you the truth. So for all of these people that are coming to talk to you, please do not get carried away. You have what it takes to take you from where you are to where you ought to be. Let me just tell you. I started this as I I I I I, not, I identify the need, identify that need. See how you can meet the need. How could I meet the need? My family was hungry. There was no money. There was no food. My husband gave me 1,000 naira. And my husband said, I trust you. So when people tell you they trust you, don't take it lightly. Accept it. Don't say, uh, they're saying it because they don't know what I'm going through. No. For them to say, for, so for somebody like Peter, who has gone through, has gone through different seasons, to tell a young person, I trust you, he won't just say it, accept it, and then begin to pray that your eyes will open to see where you can begin to use what has been given to you. So met the need of my family, cooked that day. I had the guests, my sister-in-law visited us, tasted the moi moi, loved it, asked me to make for her, and she said she was going to Pray for it. She gave me a thousand naira to make for her. I made for her the next day. My my neighbors, my neighbor tasted it. My her friend tasted it, and they both agreed to give me another one thousand naira. It became two thousand naira, and I said to myself, "Wait a minute, what is happening here? You can't eat with all your fingers." So when you begin to to be able, when you begin to achieve little success, as little as one thousand naira becoming two thousand naira, borrow yourself brain, and I tell yourself, "I'm not going to eat all of this." And that was how it started. I began to make more and more, more and more. Took it to church. I didn't have any 
flyer. I didn't have anything. I started from my immediate environment and I did it well, excellent. And I was learning from taking it to church. I took it to Corona School where I'd worked, stood at the gate and began to shout, my, my for sale, my, my for sale. By this moment, your life will not remain the same again. While I was at that gate, I didn't see the White House. While I was at that gate, I didn't see Switzerland. I didn't see me being invited to the Clinton Global Initiative. I didn't see me being invited to the World Economic Forum. I didn't see me in hosting conferences. I'm here in the UK to host a conference. I'm going to America to host a, con host a conference. I'm going to Barbados to be chairman of a wedding. How? When I stood at that gate, in the sun, in the rain, crying, I didn't see all of that, but it was there. But I believed in myself. So you break down the idea, okay? And then you begin to do all your researches. So when people are begin, big, people begin to patronize you, get feedback. Get feedback. The feedbacks help you grow. The feedbacks help you improve. There'll be some feedbacks that want to discourage you. It doesn't matter. You have to, you have to be strong. You have to be courageous. You have to believe in yourself. And then all the other business ethics begin to come in. So you begin to have legal. So now I'm not left of us. I'm here. I can be anywhere in the world. There's a structure in place. There's a structure in place. When I started, I only had my sectorial administration degree. Uh, well, it wasn't even okay, it's a degree. But now with Moi Moi, I went to the Manchester Business School, paid for my fees in pounds gone through different courses. Now I'm a public speaker. My The bulk of my money doesn't come from my money. It doesn't come from the business. It comes from what I have built in myself. When I go to speak, I charge. I should actually charge Peter for speaking. I'm not in Naira. So I charge. I charge in foreign exchange when I'm out of the country. And when I charge in Naira, it certainly has to be millions. So, Thank God for businesses, but you have to also invest largely in yourself. And investing in yourself comes with a lot of character building. It comes with a lot of character building. It comes with a lot of you staying true to your promises to people. And that's why we'll tell people under promise and over deliver. All right? Very, very I'm a very, very time conscious person. So, and then, like I said, when we're, talk if we're talking about business, we begin to expand it. How do I grow my business? Depending on your industry. So you have to be knowledgeable about your industry. And for every industry, every industry is broad. So identify with the space you want to play in. And if you want to grow, you must be able to build a team. It shouldn't be all about you. So have that at the back of your mind. And so when you have the back at the back of your mind that you need to build a team, then it's no longer all about making profits. Then sustainability begins to come in. I mean, when you started, it was like survival, right? When I started, it was like, let's eat, let's have money, let me have money. Let me to have money to buy clothes. But now, I haven't finished wearing the clothes I have. So clothes is no longer the priority. So many things are coming. And so as you build your business, as you grow, remember that you're also mandated to grow others. It's not all about you. You're mandated to help other people. You're mandated to... Show people the way. That's why you, you cannot afford to do it in a crooked manner. And have there been challenges? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Challenges will come. So you have to accept that. So that when the challenges come, you're not afraid. You're not running helter skelter. You just think to yourself, okay, this is another starting point. Let me examine. You have that first meeting. Remember the first meeting I spoke about? That first meeting with you, yourself, and you. You have that board meeting with yourself. Even if you're in debt, I spoke to a young lady and trying to help her. And then she sent me a message and said, Mama, I'm in so much debt. My debts are enormous. My debt is it's like I'm in a deep hole. I asked her, I said, please, how deep is the hole? And she said, Mama, I'm sorry. I've disappointed you. The money is a lot. In my heart, I was like, is this 300 million? And then she told me the debt is 350,000. I was like, oh, really? 350,000? That's that's small. To you, it might not be small, but let me tell you something. It's the same principle with which you sort out a three thousand naira debt, that you sort out a thirty thousand naira debt, that you sort out a three hundred thousand naira debt, that you sort out a three hundred million naira debt, or even in dollars. You know the principle is the first thing I started with. Sit down. Be true to yourself, and what do you have? 
kept of your high house. Where do I start? I'm a business person. I've owed. I'm actually still owing some people. And I'm not running away. I'm a woman of integrity. Things have happened. Econ the Nigerian economy has caused a lot of things to happen. And I won't lie to you. It's not just Nigerian economy. There have, been, there have been occasions when I took wrong decisions. I took risks that were not calculated. So, and I got myself in a mess. So, for me to say, no way, we face it. And much, you know why I'm able to face it? Much more because I have the owner of the seasons back in me. So, here we are. So, we talk about setting up registration, you register your business, you follow all government policies. Sometimes government policies can be choking, but you just attempt, you, you just have a mind, don't, don't have a mind to cut corners, don't do that. There are policies that have, you know, I have fought with, but God always makes a way and that's the advantage I have. So me, I'm, so like I said, I'm not preaching, but you see people like us who are faith-based, we have a lot of advantages. That's advantage I have, and it always I always find a way around it. So know that please don't wink in the dark. If you're doing anything and nobody knows, you're winking in the dark. And social media has made it easy for everybody. The madman is talking about his madness on social media. The drunk man is talking about his drunkenness on social media. The prostitute is marketing her body on social media. So you that you are selling water, you're saying you're saying hello. What's happening? How do you expect to grow? So as much as I'm doing so many things, I market my moi moi on social media, amongst others. Everything I, I do is on social media. And I'm still discreet enough to keep what I don't want on social media away from social media. And so when I was talking about family, I, I mean, I leverage on the fact that my husband is a great supporter. And so I knew that whatever I did, I had a support system that would help me. Thank God the children are grown now. But you know, knowing that I, ha I had at that time, and thank God I still have children who are peaceful, I knew that anything I had, I had the environment, I had the atmosphere in the house to grow it. All right? So you need courage. That's, so let forget the past. You've tried 10 businesses, it's okay. You, you've learned you've learned lessons from those failed businesses. Learn from them and now begin to do the right thing. Do not cut corners. And finally, surround yourself with the right people. It's important. Separate yourself from dream killers and dream stealers. The right people do not have to be many. The right people do not have to be popular. A lot of us are all about popular people. We're all about celebrities. Celebrities will not have your time except the one God sends to you. Stop running after celebrities. Look for your own company. Grow your company. Grow with your company. And if you have you about grown that company, then also you will need to look for the right company. I, I don't search for companies in the flesh. I search for, I look for companies prayerfully. In fact, I don't even look. God just, the owner of the seasons, God just has a way of drawing them to me. And I know that they are mine. All right? So, don't allow your, again, it is essential not to allow your past hinder you. I've spoken about identifying your strength. I've spoken about getting, is a continuous exercise. So I hope with these few points of mind, you have been inspired to know that one, you don't have a zero account. Two, you can start with what is in your account. Thank you so much for having me and God bless you. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. A round of applause for Mrs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is, what, this, is what, this is what we actually expected, man. This is what we expected. And you delivered to us and more. And one of the one of the one of the takeaways that I have had, especially and you resonated with me personally. Mm -hmm. And it's on surrounding yourself with the right people. And the fact that the right people might not be so much, might be one person. Just Absolutely. like um, I and Mr. Peter always talk. 
I, I have a lot of friends, but I have just just the right amount of friends. Mm. You understand? So, mm. so um, what what I'm saying there is there are things that I can call uh, Mr. Peter at 2 a.m. Oh, bro, this is the next business idea. How do we do this? You understand? Mm. They are just the few people. It's not about oh, damn it, this is a million naira. Oh yeah, bah. quickly go and let us start. Let us start it. The, what you need from people like that are the the enabling environment, like you said, about your family being your primary structure. Mm. It is quite important to have people like this. I, I'm, I'm happy and I'm blessed also to have a wife and a, a wonderful marriage as well. And mm. those those little things are the ones that make up your existence and your identity, like you rightly said. So you are not, you are just spot on, man. I thank you so much for 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 recalibrating. <laughs> myself mm -hmm. personally so i am i'm now recalibrated and i know that a lot of people on the on the call today have, have, have touched you've touched our lives in different in different areas and um okay. just before you go Ma, i want to i would like i would want to you to indulge us for just maybe five minutes or ten minutes to just have um feedback from everyone because i know that a lot of people have questions and i know this is the only opportunity we would have to access you, quote and unquote, for free. <laughs> so please, Ma, so it don't oh just. just... <laughs> okay, so let us just throw um one or two questions, and I'm seeing messages come on the chat. Everyone is truly appreciative of your time, Ma. Thank you so much. Everyone is just so happy and honored to have you, Ma. So um. Do do we have anybody who has any questions to ask? You can just signify by raising your hand, then you can unmute. Okay, all right. I think... There's organize organize tiger has a question. Please go ahead, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Organize tiger, you can unmute. Okay, thank you very much. Um, no and uh, the moderator as well. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate this. Uh, to the recent speaker, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mugokbe, uh, or Mugokbe, yes. Um, when you've, I yes, thank you. When you've identified all of this, your strength, you've identified um, who you really are and all of those processes, what you can offer to the public, um, your family, your neighbors, and there is a demand that is on ground that you know you can satisfy. If you're sincere with yourself and you realize that, oh, okay, I am a trainer, okay, or I am a CCTV installer, or I am this. And at some point, you made mention that the the finance, the capital is what usually keeps people from succeeding, right? So would you, how would you, um, because that when they were reading your profile, you said um, you had a Goldman Sachs, um, Goldman Sachs support financial, they supported you financially or something to, I don't know what they did, but um, yeah, from what it is, if, you, we, if we have a pitch deck, for instance, how do we now, you know, reach out and say, okay, this is what we, we have and we want support or we want partnership or we want, you know, um, we just want somebody to help out financially. Thank you very much. Cool. cool. That's cool. Okay. So, you know, my, my topic, the assignment given me did not um, include me talking about um, um, funding and all of that, but I will still answer your question to the extent to which um, time would permit me. To start with, Goldman Sachs did not give me any money. Goldman Sachs offered me a platform and an opportunity. And you see, that's why every opportunity must be maximized, however, with a sense of responsibility. Because I know that when I went on this program, I was not the only one. And quite a number of us were given the same opportunity, but some did not maximize it well. You know, I remember also when we were going through the program, there were people who were very vocal, you know, people were very vocal, very intelligent with their, I mean, there were times when questions would be asked, there would be, be conversations with lecturers because it was a course. There was a, where be conversations with, with lecturers and I'll just sit down like this. I'm like, ah, I don't understand what they're saying. 
there'll be classes on funding. And I'm like, funding, how am I going to get my books together? But ev eventually, at the end of the day, I followed the process, took the knowledge first, took advantage of the opportunity, and then I began to learn. My business started. So, so number one, I don't want to, to, to focus on my business. So whatever it is you're doing, don't let funding be your priority. It is, it is, it is important. I'm not um, downplaying it, but I'm saying, don't allow the the need to fund to raise funds distract you from the core. There are people that have raised funds for their businesses and they are nowhere. And there are people who have not raised funds and they've been able to grow their business organically, and they are doing well. But if you have to pitch your business. Number one, make sure you have a sound track record, track record of your business engagement, track record of your accounts, track record of even um, people you have networked with. Those are very important. And you see, what all of these doors is that it builds you up. You see, the people you are standing before to pitch your business, they're experienced. So they see gaps. And you see, you will not know the gaps, especially if you've not had hands-on experience. If you have read it, I mean, a lot of things that you can read up now. There's a lot of there are a lot of things that you can read up, but you see, people who are experienced will read through the lines, they will see through the cracks, they will throw you questions, and if you're not ready, it will throw you off balance. So what I would say, the answer I would give to that is that make sure you build knowledge you build knowledge, you build capacity. Don't go for funding that you will not use. Don't go for funding that at the end of the day, people who have invested in you will be wondering why did we do it? Because not only would you disappoint them, you will also stop others from receiving the funds. And that is why in Nigeria now, a lot of these organizations are pulling out because a lot of us have disappointed them. So I hope I've been able to answer your question and, you know, Build bottom up, keep growing it and networking with the right people. So as far as, as, as it, to the extent to which your business, you want your business to grow. As and you know, the dream should get bigger and bigger. And there are times when, you know, you have to pivot from where you started from. Be sincere and also, you know, continue to build your team and engage people. You can't know it all. I'm not so good with figures, although, although I know when 10 10 million and 10 million is not adding to 20 million. I know all of those things. But I, what I have also done is I have a team. I have consultants. What am I in business for? I can pay for them. So why should I keep losing sleepless nights over punching calculators? I have consultants. And so they, 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 they do all the taxes. They do all the filing. They do all of that. And all I do is, okay, this is my strength. I sell and I can look at it that, okay, two plus two must be four. If it's not four, then we have a problem here. So have basic knowledge and then keep, keep at it. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you. Ma. Yeah, then to buttress what uh, Mrs. Mabel just said about funding, um, just, just like you said, Tega, um, we've had this conversation in, in, in the past um, YBFM forum that we had. And one of the things that we should also consider when we are having, when we are building our businesses, especially from this, our little um, starter, startup stage, is um, we should focus on value than fundraising. Because when we can deliver value, okay, I'm a faith based person too. It's said in the good book says, a man's gift make its way for him. So the value will attract the funding that is required for it to expand. So there are people who have raised funding, and Mr. Peter can back me up on this. There are people who have raised funding who do not have a clue how to put together a pitch deck, mm -hmm. who do not have a clue how to do their financials, mm -hmm. who as much as possible have not even registered the business. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So many of us, many of us young founders, we, we, we saddle ourselves with problems that should not really be our problem. What should be our major, our primary focus, like Mrs. Mabel said, is focus on the business, focus on the need that you are trying to solve. 
Are you solving a need for yourself personally? Are you solving it for your neighbor? Are you solving it for your cousins, elder sister, brothers, in law? Are you solving it for the community? Who are you solving? Who are you addressing that need for? Is what. So as business, this is what we need to drive. And the value now from teaching lessons um, from house to house, Mr. Peter has built one of the largest education platforms in Africa, recognized by the African Union. Yeah. Continue with, and thank you so much, Ma, for your time. We really appreciate there's a question. Oh, sorry, there's a question. There's a question. So somebody says, okay. I have a question, Ma. In a case where I want to Bless you. We, 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 we pray you a good conference and a good uh, meeting for the rest of the week, ma. Amen. Thank you. Bye, everybody. God bless. God bless, ma. Thank you so much, ma. Oh, she left. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. So, I essentially didn't want to, you know, um, um, come in. So, Tega, your question was very valid around raising uh, funding and all that. Two quick information. Number one, almost all the models, almost all of the things that need to be known about starting and growing a business will be shared over this week, right? And they include things like market readiness. That is how to go to market, what you need to know before going to the market, you know, all of that. Investment readiness, how to prepare for funding, how to raise funding. As a matter of fact, on one of these days, and this is, is interesting, I think Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, we're having two people from the United States, all American citizens. One of them is from the state of Arizona, Arizona State University. She'll be coming to speak to us on, on, um, on, um, on the GLA, GLA Accelerator Program, a program that once you apply, she's gonna give us the link, she's gonna talk about it. Once you apply, and you are picked, you know, it comes with visas, you know, all of that, all of that. You head over to Arizona to do your program, three months, they give you an office, you know, all of that. We are going to have somebody come speak to us on that. We're also going to have somebody come speak to us on, uh, her name is Tamina Watson. We posted this one. She is the author of the bestseller, Startup Visa, all right? So she's going to be coming to speak to us on how, you know, the entire Startup Visa, how it works, how you can leverage on it. And you know, some of us, some of the greatest, and we must address the elephant in the room, some of the greatest challenge we have is how to get visa, let's be honest, right? Whether it is to Japa or to remain, well, that one. <laughs> but at least it's a question, you know, that a lot of people will, you know, will want answer to. So we'll have Tamina come speak to us. Actually, one of the things I'm working on, if not tomorrow, that should happen on Wednesday. I want to get somebody in the US embassy to also come speak to us, not the consul general now, just one of those trade trade officers or even the Canadian embassy, you know, to log in and to come speak to us, you know, on how to maneuver the whole visa process and all that. So it's going to be an intense, you know, couple of weeks. Then on the last day, day five, we will have one on one, you know, with investors. So it's one thing for somebody to have to come to prepare, to come to speak to us on how, you know, to prepare for funding. 
And these are people who have raised funding. For instance, the CEO of Keeper will be speaking tomorrow. She's a, he's the person who brought TikTok to Africa. He is the person who, who is the founder of Keeper with over $10 million in funding. You know, he's going to be speaking tomorrow, right? So somebody that has raised over $10 million in funding, somebody that brought TikTok to Africa must know how to prepare for funding. I want to think everybody agrees with that, all right? And he's going to be speaking to us tomorrow. I mean, so there's just going to be a lot. Day five, in Yaboeji, uh, we'll be speaking. Of course, we all know in Yaboeji. Uh, the... the uh, I, we are trying to get one of the investors on drag on Lions Den, Nigeria's Lions Den, to also speak. Paulo Unibe, the CEO of Landmark, you know, but he's here to confirm. But you know, we'll have all the people on our flyers here. Yeah? They are going to be coming, you know, to speak to us. Uh, there is only one challenge. The challenge is the person that is supposed to speak next just texted me that you know uh, uh, um, something something came up and all of that. So we are going to do it this way. Today is the opening day. Is our introductory. Uh, uh, session. And so we've had Mrs. Ayo Mekbakwe, the CEO of No Leftover, you know, just come talk to us about how to start from where you are, leveraging on your relationships and all that. We'll continue this conversation tomorrow. All right. 10 a.m. tomorrow, but tomorrow we're going to be having three sessions. Okay. And between now and tomorrow, we'll also publish, you know, timetable so that we'll email you the timetable so that you have, a, you know, you are aware and what happens when, who is speaking when and all that. So we'll continue tomorrow. Uh, please reach out uh, uh, to your friends, your family, bring them in. Okay, this is virtual. We can go as much as 1,000 people, all right? Let's see how we can truly, truly help our friends, you know, gain the kind of insights that we all need to scale uh, 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 to the next level. Lastly, before we go, one thing that Mrs. Ayo said that really struck is that seasons have lifelines, and that's profound, right? Seasons have lifeline. Uh, Dami just spoke about we building one of the largest education platform in the world. That is true, right? But where I am now, I don't even remember that about myself. Why? Because that season, for me, that life, that season is past. It's now to set a new record. It's now to do something bigger, all right? So irrespective of how successful you are, irrespective of the growth that you have experienced, I hope that you will leverage this one week, all right? This one week to also reevaluate the seasons of your life, to reevaluate the seasons of your business, and to begin to ask yourself the hard eating questions. You can't keep rallying around the same progress, the same testimony. Nah, nah, it can't be the same story every time. It must be that guys, you know, uh, uh, oh, okay, okay, Tega, I hear you. Let me, okay, so Tega says, I should do a screenshot so that, you know, people can also share it with your friends. I'm doing that right away. Okay, one minute, please. Okay, so I just did. Um, 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 so that's it, guys. All right, so this one week- Can people, that's... Can people enable their camera? Sorry, sir. Can people enable their camera? I mean, I mean for the short. Oh, okay. Okay, so guys, would you be kind enough to put on your camera, even if it's just for two minutes, then you can put it back off. Even if it's just for two seconds or something, right? But I'm going to put off my own camera so that the Youth in Business logo will show. Just for the shots. Okay. All right, thank you, guys. You are very helpful. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so I just did. It's fine. I mean, you can leave it on. You can put it off. We're good. All right, so that's the rundown of how the week is going to be. So go, please go out, talk on your status, call your friends. Everybody should come on board. This is the only session we're having for this morning, right? We'll continue tomorrow morning. For those who, so I would also tell you a trick, and you need to be very transparent. Evening sessions will be us replaying all that happened during the morning session. You understand it? However, there may be one or two speakers, right? because I'm planning to bring more people actually from Canada to come speak to us. And because of the time difference, those ones will be able, you know, speaking in the evening. But whatever happens, you know, we're going to be updating you. But all the speakers you see on our flyers, they're going to be speaking during the morning sessions, okay? All of them, even the people from the US are going to be speaking, you know, in the morning session. But it's always recorded. So in the evening, you know, we'll just play out, you know, all that happened during the morning. So on that note, we have come to the end 
of um, uh, this discussion. We hope that you learned something from this Ayo's uh, session. But tomorrow, the CEO of Kipa, the guy who brought TikTok, is speaking. Uh, Tejwa Bisoye, the former executive secretary of Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, will also be speaking. And the CEO of Swipe will also be speaking. All right? So they are all confirmed. All right? Thank you very much. Please enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Bye, everyone now. Thank you, sir.